Hey guys, Ted from NerdArchy here, Four Nerds by Nerds, hanging out with a couple of guys. Hey, I'm Ryan. I'm Dave. And uh, today we have a GM911 from uh, Anjay, Anjay, sorry, uh, and he wants to know how do you deal with burnout as a DM? But before we get into that, down below in the description you can find a link to the NerdArchy newsletter where you can get... Uh, tips and tricks sent right to your inbox, as well as learn how to game with Nerdarchy and other exclusive bonuses. So, Anjay just finished running a what he calls a big campaign arc, uh, getting the, the characters from level 1 to 5. And he's feeling burnout. And he's feeling burnout. Wants to know what to do. Okay, so a, one of the things that, that I would normally suggest, but this might not be an option, and if you still want a game, but don't want to you don't want to kill your campaign, and you don't want to kill your group, so normally no, TP, like, no TPK is that what you're saying to yeah, a party yeah. kill. Yeah. So normally I might say, okay, maybe you need to take a break for a couple okay. sessions and let someone else w run, and then go back to that game. But that might not be an option. Like some, a lot of times you end up where you got one guy, he's the DM, no one else is going to do right. it, and th there is a real risk of losing your gaming group and, if you don't yeah, if you stop playing. He does say in the description that these these are all guys that are. are all the players are new to D D and D. New, new to so I would recommend a palate cleanser. You know what they could do? Uh, board game nights, or just like you know, if they're of age, beer and pizza or whatever. Well, and, and board games. Yeah, you know, like to kind of like have some social interactions. That's not actually playing a role playing game. Or you could find another role playing game to sort of have a one shot off on. Yeah, yeah. The only problem too is like again like. You know, from our experience, it seems like that kind of stuff can really fizzle a campaign, and you could like end up never going back to it. Well, you you had, you had brought up palate cleanser. Do you want to describe what you what you mean by that? All right, so you do a one off game within the campaign where it's only going to be uh, that session, and you go in a completely 180 degree direction from what you've been doing. Maybe you make it a silly game. Like maybe you you know even if you have to incorporate some kind of uh, story elements that make make it work, to, so that you know you almost go in Looney Tunes cartoon direction, <laughs> to and and you know it's something that's a lot more lighthearted than maybe uh, what you've been doing, and there is definitely different ways you can do this in the confines of even a D and D game. Because I'm pretty sure he said that's what they're playing, and they're, mm -hmm. they're all new to D and D. Right. I mean, like even like a, a good example of this, it happens um, in superhero uh, comics uh, fairly frequently, where they introduce like the cosmic imp type character, mm -hmm. who isn't really necessarily evil, but you know he's a real nuisance and a pain in the ass. Also, Star Trek it would be like a Q. Type oh yeah, character. absolutely. Yeah. So, and but they have so much power, like you're you're really literally at the at the whims of their mercy. Mm -hmm. You know, unless you can unless you can outthink them and figure out a way of the, a way around the problem, but you know, so it's so just something to really just shake things up and and make it lighthearted and easy for you um, to do as the DM, and you don't have to put a whole lot of thought into it. Yeah. You know, bur burnout is something that you know a lot of DMs do do wind up going through. Uh, I know our group has you know gotten that that burn many times, and. You know, you know, as the DM starts to, to falter with an, an issue or an idea, you know, a lot of groups, someone else steps up, and when that happens, you never wind up going back to that game. Um, so, so in order to deal with that, you really need to, to push through. You need to find, you know, if you want to keep that game running, you want to keep that storyline happening, you really want to have something. Consistency. You need consistency. Right. Yeah. Um, maybe maybe a combination of what Ryan said and what we've said. Maybe you do a short gaming session that night, and and then you know where you if you say you normally game for four hours, well you only run a session for an hour and a half, two hours, and then the rest of the time you spend with uh, board games and and pizza and beer or whatever. And so this way, like you know, you don't break your rhythm, but then like you know you kind of like wash away some of the RPG. From the D, from the DM from doing the work or whatever and uh, you know I, I think that's part relaxing. of the problem like especially if it's like you know like if it were a weekly game like that's a lot of the strain to mm -hmm. come up that week after week if you're in school or working or whatever um, to be the sole person that's basically providing like entertainment for people that like sometimes you have to you know like you might need a, a night off like hey let's just all get together which so you're keeping the habit of mm -hmm. getting together as a group. But you're doing a thing where, like, the strain of the work of getting together isn't on you. Like, right. you know, so, like, yeah, board gaming, playing, like, King of Tokyo or Munchkin or whatever, like, could be a nice departure for, for a night. 
and then like oh but next week like hey we're gonna k- pick up on a, on a new arc right. and find find our pace there like as long as you don't start a new campaign like I don't think there's a problem with like that derailment of of a campaign. Just make sure, like, if you're all new characters and go off in a side direction, you're probably you might not ever get back to the old campaign arc. And if that mattered to you, right? Yeah, you, know, you shouldn't. So do you know, a good first of all, you have to like kind of feel out your players too and see what they're what they want. You know, so like obviously, if you have a group of people that come for RPGs and have no interest in doing something different with that mm-hmm. time slot then that's where you could come into a problem too. So you're yeah. going to have to figure, so you're going to have to get a feel for your group. This is going to be, your solution is going to be very individualized. Towards your people. Yeah. Toward, yeah. Towards your people. You have to know what they like, you know, like, like, you know, it could, you know, maybe it's not a game night. Maybe it's a movie night, you know, whatever. Maybe you guys, you know, maybe you guys put on the old Dungeons and Dragons movie and riff on it the whole time or something, you know, to stay on the movie, what, you know, play or, cards against humanity or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, whatever, you know, whatever your group likes to do, or again, I, I personally like the idea of a short session combined with one of these other things so that you guys are filling that same time slot. So you're still getting the RP in. You know, they still they still meet, they still roll dice, but it's cut short because, you know, you're trying to lessen the strain while you're also thinking about how you're going to, you know, move on. From our own group, I know Mark doesn't want to come for board game night. You know, he right. might do it occasionally, but for the most part... If it's the role playing night slot, that's what he wants to do. Yeah, you know? he's he's here to you know roll dice and kill shit. Yeah, pretty much. In his so. own words. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That is that is the phrase he uses. <laughs> yeah. So you just got you just have to know the people at the table, you know, and, and then you have to figure out what's going to work for you guys. Uh, you know, in this in the uh, comments below, you guys, if you have some suggestions to help NJ out, let us know. And while you're at it, like, subscribe, and share. You can check out some funny memes over on Facebook. You can also check us out over on Instagram. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy.